hello, I want to bring your attention to a rather special artist who's having an auction. Her name is Susan Bleckett. She's exhibited widely across England and Scotland. Um, I think most recently at the Oxo Tower in London. But there's a story behind this that makes this auction particularly remarkable. Susan was diagnosed in the autumn of 2018 with motor neuron disease. At the time she lived in Dumfriesia with her husband who became her sole carer. And when it became too much, they decided to move to live with their daughters in the south of England, uh, Flora and Letty. Uh, Flora is an old school friend of my wife Sophie's, so that's how I came to know this story. Unfortunately, tragically, shortly after the move, um, Flora and Letty's father passed away, leaving their mother with a new life in a new place without her husband and losing her power of speech and yet with courage, wisdom, wit and calmness she persevered and created and continues to create a fantastic body of art. She's a still life artist but with a very modern twist. Letty and Flora want you to know Susan how extraordinary they think you are, how much they love you and admire you um, and how proud they are to be your daughters. And Sophie and I want to send you all of our love and courage for your beautiful arts and good luck for the auction as well. This auction, Susan has very kindly, um, as she has done with a lot of her time since diagnosis, um, devoted to the Motor Neuron Disease Association. She's been very frank and honest about her journey with the disease and the proceeds from this auction will go towards the Oxfordshire branch of the Motor Neuron Disease Association. 50% of the pieces of art and 100% of proceeds of any limited edition print, that is. Um, the exhibition is going to be introduced by um, Professor Kevin Talbot of the Motor Neuron Disease Consultant and Head of the Nuffield Department of Clinical Neurosciences, the NDCN for short, we love an acronym, um, with narration and personal accounts of Susan's story um, by her daughters, Flora and Letty. And then there'll be a short presentation on current research into the disease by Dr. Elizabeth Gray of the NDCN. There'll also be a Q&A session afterwards and the opportunity to purchase then a piece of art or limited edition print. Uh, my association with the motor and urinary disease began when I portrayed Stephen Hawking in a TV drama some years ago and I met an extraordinary group of, of men who had been diagnosed recently and not so recently with the disease and their grace, their humility, their humour, their candour, and emotional openness was staggering, inspiring, and has kept me, kept me involved with the association ever since. We need to raise money for this disease. It is something that had it as it will, I'm sure, have more research done into it, there are great chances that it could make um, all the difference in the research that's needed into understanding how this disease occurs and what potential preventions or interventions um, may be possible in the future. But it needs money. Um, there are many other causes, many other illnesses as well that have a great deal more funding than this disease, but it is It's hard to describe. Um, you have someone who is completely in themselves in a body that is dying around them. You are, to all intents and purposes, the person you were before your diagnosis for two to three years as your body um, starts to shut down as the signals from your brain reduce and muscles atrophy and speech and movement is reduced and lost. Um, it's incredibly quick, it's seemingly utterly random as to who it affects and it's devastating for both um, those who've been diagnosed with it and their families and friends. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy purchasing a fantastic piece of art and learning a little bit more about this disease and about where the research is taking us. And 
that this story has inspired you to engage with an extraordinary woman, her beautiful art, and uh, a possible way of helping the Motor Neuron Disease Association, of which I'm very proud to be associated with. Thank you for listening. To welcome you to this event, which celebrates the great artwork of Susan Blackett, one of our patients. And we, in the Motor Neuron Disease Clinic in Oxford, we see about 10% of all the patients in the UK with motor neuron disease, and they come from far and wide. And very often, as we get to know them, we start to discover their life in the broadest possible sense. And as a physician, that is something which is a great honor, privilege to have access to people's world. And Susan, you know, has demonstrated tremendous bravery and fortitude in this difficult illness, but she's carried on being an artist and that hasn't taken away her identity. And that's something that's an inspiration to all of us. So I hope you enjoy uh, this evening and you get some kind of insight into the kind of research that we're doing. Um, Liz Gray, one of our postdoctoral researchers is going to tell you about a specific area to do with biomarkers. And it really deals with one of the big issues with motion neuron disease is how can we diagnose the disease earlier and how in fact can we monitor progression and that's really a big challenge and it, it relates to how quickly one can get drugs developed, tested and in, into patients. So it's a very important area. It's one of many things that we do, including uh, investigating the very basic molecular and cellular processes in the cells, what's going wrong inside a motion neuron that leads to it degenerating that causes motion neuron disease. These are very difficult problems, but ultimately if we can solve them, we will have treatments at work. So thank you very much indeed for your interest and I hope that you enjoy the evening. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Gray and I'm a senior postdoctoral scientist working at the Oxford Motor Neuron Disease Centre and I've been in the field of neurodegenerative disease research for 15 years. Over the past few years I have recently been responsible for the setup, organisation and management of the Ambrosia study here in Oxford. This strategy was funded by the Motor Neuron Disease Association back in 2016 as a result of the Ice Bucket Challenge. One of the difficulties of diseases like motor neuron disease is that, unlike diseases like diabetes, we do not have a test to either make the diagnosis or to monitor progress and response to treatment. So a major focus of our research is to use the samples kindly given to us by patients when they come to clinic to identify chemical signals in the blood or the spinal fluid. Our ability to carry out this work depends critically on the generosity of patients working with us as partners by giving us their blood and other samples when they come to clinic and the research visits take place as part of a routine motor neuron disease clinic visit and people with motor neuron disease and other neurological conditions and people who are neurologically healthy are able to give us samples and we also monitor the disease symptoms of the patients. The samples donated to us contribute to a large library which can be used in the future to develop new tests as further discoveries are made. As you can see on this next slide, one visit results in a lot of samples being taken. These have to be stored very carefully using a barcode system. And by the end of the study, we anticipate to be storing in excess of 50,000 of these cryovals of biosamples at each site. This is an just to illustrate how we store these samples in the library. On the left, I'm putting samples in a very cold freezer, and on the right, I am accessing uh, a liquid nitrogen store. And using these samples, we have been able to publish many papers whereby we've been able to identify changes in the blood and cerebrospinal fluid which are now having a real impact in how we carry out clinical trials and how we monitor patients. We are now measuring these chemical signals called biomarkers in the samples that have been collected from patients and their relatives as part of the Ambrosia study. 
One biomarker that we are measuring is neurofilament protein, which is part of the internal scaffolding of nerve cells that can be released following nerve cell damage. And we are able to measure this in the blood and spinal fluid of patients. We are proud to be part of a great team of young scientists and neurologists. We are very grateful to all patients with motor neuron disease and their families for supporting us through the donation of their samples and also to the Motor Neuron Disease Association for funding our research. Anyone wishing to make a donation to the Motor Neuron Disease Association can do so using a Just Giving page dedicated to Susan's art exhibition. And anyone wishing to purchase a piece of Susan art, Susan's art, please email me as the first point of contact using my email address. Upon purchase, Susan will very generously donate 50% of the value of each piece of artwork straight to the Motor Neuron Disease Association. Letty and I feel very bad to be talking on behalf of Mum, rather than Mum being able to talk for herself. Anyone that knows Mum will agree that she's never short of a word or two. Mummy's always been creative, a professional cook, a wonderful sewer, flower arranger, and as you're about to see, artist. I'm not going to talk too much about Mum's art as my sister Letty will talk about that shortly. But I would like to say that as a child, I would watch Mum paint and I was in awe. I used to ask her how she did them and she'd say that she just paints what she sees. Given that she's entirely self-taught, I found this absolutely amazing. The accuracy and precision in her artwork is incredible and gave both Letty and I the inspiration and passion that encouraged us both into our own artistic careers. Mum and Dad encouraged us hugely and I will be eternally grateful for this. But this did mean that sadly for a long time, Mummy tended to forget her own ab ability and told everyone that she was just the amateur. Thankfully, this all changed and I will let Letty continue the story and talk about Mum's work. But before she does, I feel I should tell you a bit about Mummy as a person and the impact that motor neuron disease has had on all of our lives. In May 2017, and unbeknown to us, our lives were about to be turned upside down. Mummy began to show what we now know to be her first symptoms of MND. We were staying with her and Dad, and one morning she told me that something had gone wrong with her voice. In her words, she felt like the power had been turned off. To me, I couldn't hear anything untoward, and I had no idea of the significance of this moment, and that this simple sentence was to be the beginning of our long and heartbreaking journey of motor neuron disease. A disease that has literally changed all of our lives in unimaginable ways. Mummy was a huge chatterbox, as she still likes to tell everyone. She literally never drew breath and loved nothing more than chatting away to all of her family and friends. Thomas's night before Christmas, like tonight, this is what happened, there's Thomas. Was the night before Christmas and all through the well, yard, Fred, you all off that? the engines were Don't restless stand up on that and sleeping was hard. They couldn't get to sleep. But Grandpa's coming to sit down and too. Grandpa's coming too. Their stockings, still empty, and the glimpses they stole. Where are their stockings? Can you see their stockings? She was sociable, fun, and as an amazing cook, her and Dad loved entertaining. She was, and still is, a strong character, with strong opinions, and she had a very famous temper if we ever overstepped the mark. As a mother, wife, and granny, where do I start? She has devoted everything to us, 
and to my father, who we tragically lost last year, and who would have been so proud of her right now. She's incredibly loving and has always had a sense of fun and a sense of the ridiculous. I know that she grieves so badly not being able to chat and laugh with us all, and especially not being able to do so with her young grandchildren in a way that she would have done if it wasn't for MND. I think it's fair to say that we all feel robbed. To watch someone you love, my best friend, slip into a silent world, unable to eat or drink, is the most heartbreaking and unless you've gone through it, unimaginable thing to watch. MND meant that we had to tear her and daddy away from our beloved home in Scotland so that we could be on hand to help with her care. MND has made it impossible for mummy to do any of the things that she loved and was most famous for. And with this, it's taken away her confidence as well. I think what I hate the most, and as you've probably noticed, is that you find yourself talking about certain sides of that person in the past tense. And this feels so wrong when the person you love so much is still with you. But this is the nature of this devastating and cruel disease. It slowly kills off parts of that person and those parts are rendered to the past whilst leaving the sufferer fully aware of what is happening to them. At the moment, and in mum's case, as you've probably gathered, this is her speech and her swallowing. I cannot tell you how much I would give to hear my mother talk again. And it breaks our hearts when she cooks us delicious meals that she can no longer have herself. But even this is getting harder for her now as her hands begin to get weaker. We don't know what else MND will throw at us, but what I can say is that we will continue to tackle it head on. He's more interested in grabbing We're in awe of mum's strength on, and are with her every step of the way. We all pray so much for a breakthrough in the amazing research that's going on, but this can only be made possible by people's support and by raising awareness of this heartbreaking disease. We would like to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to everyone at Mum's MND Clinic at the John Radcliffe in Oxford, to the local branch of the MNDA, to Mum's GP, Dr Jenkins, the Sue Ryder Hospice, and to Mum's incredible carers at Countywide Caring in Warborough, who have continued to care for her so lovingly throughout this recent crisis. With MND, you simply couldn't get by without all of the wonderful support and advice that all of these people give to any family suffering with this brutal disease. I would lastly like to say a huge thank you to Professor Talbot for spotting Mum's ta talent for himself and coming up with the idea. To Russ Spivy and Liz Gray for working so hard and pulling it all together. On a positive, thank God Mum still has her painting and the joy that they bring to us all. I will now let Letty talk to you about her work and we hope that you enjoy them as much as we do. Thank you. Painting comes very naturally to Mummy. She is essentially self-taught, which is remarkable. During her 20s, she did lots of life drawing in London, working mainly in pastels in a very energetic and free style. Her 30s and 40s, were predominantly dedicated to bringing my sister and me up, but she always had a creative project on the go. At this stage, 
Mummy began working in oil paint. My sister then went to art school in Florence, where she was trained in the traditional techniques of oil painting. Mummy says it was visiting Flora in Italy and absorbing what she was learning that she really understood how to get the most out of the medium. Her work became very detailed and she used glazes and refined brushwork, but she was still sticking to a traditional still life layout. This changed when she saw a painting by a student in Florence of some fruit from a bird's eye view. Mummy says this inspired her to abandon the traditional still life setup and adopt a style for which she has gained much admiration. Mummy's work is traditional in essence, but with a very fresh and modern layout. It has a strong design element and hangs brilliantly in a contemporary interior. Her paintings blend the old with the new. Mummy's first painting in this style was a single green apple among lots of red ones. Daddy entitled it Granny Smith at the Crimson Ball. This humorous title well captured the quirky nature of the painting. Since that first one, Mummy has had fun grouping together fruits and vegetables so that they occupy the canvas. Some seem to be dancing in the space, whilst others stand still as if in conversation. Mummy has exhibited in Scotland and England, most recently in the Arts Beyond Limits exhibition at the Oxo Tower Gallery in London. This was organised by the MNDA for fellow sufferers of motor neurone disease. Just before Mummy's motor neurone symptoms began, began to show, she was asked by an Edinburgh gallery to produce 40 paintings for a solo show. Mummy worked really hard to get this body of work together, but really disappointingly and unfortunately, the gallery owner was unable to go ahead with the show when he had serious health issues of his own. The paintings in this online exhibition are from that collection of paintings. I really hope you enjoy them. Her better. MND, the vile thief. MND, you vile thief. You steal away the ability to walk and talk. You pilfer the very enjoyment of food and drink. You rob the very breath of life and time with loved ones. MND, you vile thief. You cowardly weasel your way into lives. You hide and manifest in many ways to disguise your cruel intent. 
you lurk in the shadows to attack like a thug or pickpocket away small pieces of people. MND, you vile thief. You think you are untouchable, undetectable, and no arrest can be made. You smugly go about taking lives, ruining families like the serial killer you are. You are brazen when you show yourself, when you already have a firm grip of those affected. MND, you vile thief. You will not win this battle. Our special force of supporters and volunteers grow with every life you take. You will be tirelessly investigated by our teams of specialists working in collaboration around the globe. You will, by your vile nature, encourage more people to raise funds and fight harder with a passion and energy you cannot comprehend. MND, you vile thief, you will be detected. You will be arrested. You will be eradicated from this world. Inspired by our MND angels and warriors, their family and friends that I am honoured to work with and support. Thank you. Russell Spock.